Welcome back. Tom Harbin here with you, Congressman Mark Bocan on the line, taking your calls. And uh, let's see here, Dave in Huffman Estates, Illinois. Dave, you're on the air with Congressman Bocan. Congressman, um, I just read an article uh, yesterday about where Wisconsin has submitted a request to the federal government asking to become the first state in the country to drug test applicants for Medicaid. I, I believe that is that correct, that? yes, in the legislature, yeah. Just reading that, that, you know, I don't know, is this the starting of the floodgates or what? Because uh, said Scott Walker submitted the waiver, you know, to, to the Trump administration requiring able-bodied childless adults to apply for Medicaid health benefits to undergo drug screening. Yeah, yeah and, this is one we've seen in other states. It, it, it just costs money. It hasn't been proven to find people who are uh, using drugs who are getting the, the money. It's, it's one of these, like, demonizing tools of the poor again. And, you know, trust me, Scott Walker has not had an original thought in his head for a long, long time. The most original thing he said recently was that he got his bald spot from hitting his head on a cabinet. I mean, it's not a joke. He actually said that his bald spot came because he hit his head on the cabinet. Right. And, um, th this is a guy who's just going to do whatever the Republicans nationally want him because he still thinks that someday he'll be president. So I think you will see this uh, repeated in other states. Uh, he just always wants to be the first to do these crazy ideas. You know, I think the pushback should always be whenever they put this forward, well, then anyone who gets government money uh, from CEOs and companies that get uh, you know, monies uh, under so-called economic development, no matter what, then everyone should – that should be the policy for everyone who gets money uh, should have to submit to that and not just demonizing the poor. But again, uh, not an original thought. Uh, it's just you know, he's trying to get a little national attention. Others we should be drug testing all these CEOs and companies all across the country that are getting corporate welfare. Well, exactly. I mean, yeah. if you want to be consistent, there you go. Logic, if you don't just want to bash poor people, let's say the CEOs of the defense money. contractors. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm all in favor of that. Tom, actually, I, you know, I, I think we're, I'm being facetious. I, I'm assuming you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tom in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Tom, you're on the, on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hey, Congressman, it's good to talk to you. In light of this NSA uh, release of this data about just how deep that Russians hacking our election, I've been, I read this thing last January in the USA Today, and if you Google Green Bay, Wisconsin, Russia election, just how deep Russia hacked into your state's elections. They were at the county level for the BOEs and the Democrats, uh, the party things. Are you familiar with that? No, Tom, I'm not. I will have to uh, take a look at that. I have not. Yeah, Google Maybe. Green Bay, Wisconsin, Russia elections. It's just chilling. And I know in the last get... hacking, uh, Mike Quigley from Chicago said that uh, they've had officials there who were hacked in this last batch, and we've had some other people coming out talking about things they know uh, from their localities. I, I'm just not familiar. Green Bay's not in my district, but I, I'm not familiar with that story, Tom. But that is the point, though, is if part of what happened was hacking into, uh, at least that we know from this one document, about 120 election officials around the country and hacking into the companies, there's not many of them, that make the voting machines. And then when the Republicans get rid of the commission that has to approve the patches, if you take away that safeguard and they're hacking into, I mean, you can you put these dots together pretty quick, what could happen, and uh, all the more reason why uh, we need to deal with this through an independent commission as yeah. quickly as possible. Yeah, and, uh, and also deal with our voting systems because, Absolutely. you know, if the Russians can get in, then anybody can, not to diminish them, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, right. I agree. it's, it's not secure. Uh, Jeremy in Bloomington, Indiana. Hey, Jeremy, what's up? Yes, uh, I just watched the Comey hearing, and at the end there, Senator McCain, um, some of my friends are thinking he's gone senile. Um, I thought it was interesting that he, it seemed like to me that he was trying to create this, uh, this idea that uh, he talked about the Hillary emails and the email thing he brought up that way, but it seemed like he was trying to link Hillary to the Russian investigation uh, and, and, he, and he was having a hard time pulling the, the, the cart there or whatever analogy to use, but that he was trying to uh, not just talk about a double standard, which he did mention, and that there's an investigation going on with Hillary and that that was concluded. And so therefore, you know, there's, there's no charges and that this investigation is still going on like any logical, rational person would actually uh, think. But it seemed like to me that McCain was trying, he actually, um, like he, he laid out how Hillary's in the campaign and Trump's in the campaign. They're both in the campaign. And then the Russians are, are interfering with the campaign. So therefore you can't say that 
one candidate's going to be charged and the other wouldn't, which of course Comey the whole time said that, you know, at the time he did, he did tell Trump three times that he wasn't under investigation, but yet like McCain seemed like he was trying to pull the, yeah. the car. Jeremy, uh, neither Congressman Pocan or I were able to watch uh, M Senator McCain's uh, testimony because it happened while we were on the air. Uh, although I, I have seen a few messages go flying by about it seemed like he was less than coherent. But um, I'm not sure how either one of us can comment on it unless you have a specific question. I was unaware of that. Um, if I may, I got one more thing then that you might be able to comment on. Real quick, please. Uh, interstate cross check. Not a lot of people are talking about it. There's a documentary out there. I won't name it, but there is one out there about it. I watched it. And it the best democracy money can buy it. by Greg Pallas you're talking about. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people uh, need to look into that. And I think it's very important that we really address that. Okay, uh, Jeremy, let's let Congressman Pocan respond to that. Yeah, so Jeremy, you know, again, I, you know, what I appreciate about this program is, you know, one, I mean, you know, Tom, you have great uh, callers, and this issue has come up, and because of that, you know, we uh, put a bill together, and right now we're working with John Conyers, who's the dean of uh, the Democrats. Uh, on the bill, where we think we're at our final stages, we got a few last comments from some groups that we're working on, but we're going to be putting something out there that's going to make it so that uh, we can really talk about this issue and make it very clear that if you're going to purge someone off a list, you've got a lot of protections in place for the voters. So uh, Good. We're, we're dealing with it, and then John Conyers, again, uh, is doing it with us. Yeah. Alan in Crown Point, Indiana. Hey, Alan, you're on the air with Congressman uh, Pocan. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Jim Comey said that he gave copies of his memos to a trusted friend from the Columbia Law School who was not, you know, it was outside of the limits that you should be able to do that. Is that a felony? I, I couldn't tell you. And honestly, I've had appropriation hearings and everything else. I've uh, been, been catching very little. I, I, I heard the testimony. I can. He, okay. he said that he wrote the memos in a way that they contained nothing that would cause them to become classified. And that when... He felt that Trump had lied about what he was saying and what was going on. He took one of his memos, he gave them to a friend of his who's a professor at, uh, the, at a law school here in town and, or at Columbia, wherever it was, and asked that man to, uh, or a woman, whoever it was, asked that person to convey it to the, to the media, presumably the Washington Post or the New York Times. Um, and um, no, it doesn't, I, I can't see where there's anything uh, illegal about that. But I don't know. Congressman, your thoughts? Again, I, I didn't see the You didn't see it. Right. Okay, so let's, let's move on. George, in East Amherst, New York, you're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Uh, hi, Congressman Pocan. It's an uh, honor to speak to both you and Tom Hartman. I thank you for all you both do. Um, I'll get right to the point. It's a very simple question. Uh, Maxine Waters is very vocal about uh, wanting Trump impeached and has never shied away from talking about it. I don't hear many other Democrats talking about it, and I know it's a political process, and I know there's other things involved in it, but... What, what are your thoughts on it? Where, where do you stand on that, if you don't mind me asking? Sure, George. Well, thanks for your comments. And, uh, you know, I actually was one of the, I think, first on the floor to raise the impeachment word, I guess, uh, as we, we talked about his connections, you know, to his business interests. I mean, there's, there's multiple levels you could look at uh, that could potentially be impeachable. I, what I've always said is we have to keep every option on the table, including impeachment. But we also have to realize in order to get impeachment, you have to have Republican votes. It has to go through the House and the Senate, which are controlled by Republicans. So I think, you know, largely uh, what we're doing is continuing to build a case to the point that without those votes, you can't impeach. You can only introduce articles of impeachment. If you're going to do it, you want to do it so you can actually uh, impeach someone. So you have to make sure you have every bit of evidence to the point that you can do that. So uh, we're, we're talking about it. We say every option is on the table, including impeachment. Every time we see something like today, I think you get closer on what I call an impeachment clock, uh, like we used to have uh, for, um, uh, for, for for world safety. Uh, you know, we we move closer and closer to that time. Uh, but you know, let's understand the process. It has to go through the House and the Senate, which are Republican controlled. Therefore, there is a very high bar of uh, making sure this is, is out there in order to make it work. Yeah, the Republicans are not going to turn on Trump until, until he's so wounded he's no longer useful to them. When they feel like their chances are hurt because of him, that's when they're going to do this. Yeah, and, 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 the, the, and the, the flag that will tell us all that that's what's happening is when they all start praising Mike Pence, in my opinion. Yeah. So, Congressman Pocan, thanks so much for being with us this week. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Great talking with you. Thank you yep. so much. Take care. Uh, and you can reach Congressman Pocan. You can tweet him at Rep. Mark Pocan. You can visit his website at pocan.house.gov. Uh, we'll be back 
more of your calls, the news of the day, my thoughts on the news of the day uh, right afterwards.